Welcome to our review on developing the atomic model. So what we need to know about here are the key scientists that were involved in the actual development of our modern day atomic model and what they actually contributed. Now the good news is that when we're looking at these scientists we don't have to know their full names, just their surnames is good enough. You also don't need to memorize the actual years or anything like this. Those are just there just to give you an idea of the time scales here. So our first scientist we're going to look at is John Dalton. Back in 1803, he came up with this idea that all matter is made from atoms. And then he also adapted that a little bit further by saying that all atoms of an element are identical to each other. So all atoms in gold would be identical to each other. But different elements contain different types of atom. So those atoms that make up silver would be different to the atoms that make up gold. And the way that he thought of these atoms was as tiny indestructible spheres because he had no idea really what they really looked like. Our second scientist then is JJ Thompson and we're going to jump forward 94 years from the work of Dalton to see what he actually did. And the key discovery that Thompson made was that he discovered the electron. And the way that he did this was through using experiments which involved cathode rays. And what he actually found was that those beams of cathode rays actually change direction when they pass through magnetic or electric fields. So because of that, he came to the conclusion that the cathode rays themselves were made up of these tiny negative particles, which he called the electron. So in order to explain the whole idea about the fact that these atoms contain electrons, but the atoms are neutral overall, he came up with something called the plum pudding model, which is what you can see in the bottom left there. So the plum pudding model basically had this idea that we had this positive cloud that then had electrons dotted around inside it. Our third scientist then is a short time jump to 1909 where we meet Ernest Rutherford and he was actually working alongside two other scientists called Geiger and Marsden. Now what these guys did was they actually did an experiment with these thin pieces of gold foil and they fired these positively charged particles called alpha particles at that foil. And what they expected to see if the plum pudding model was correct was that those alpha particles would just go straight through. But that wasn't what they actually saw. What they found was that many alpha particles changed direction, which suggested to them there was something that stopped them going straight through. So Rutherford actually explained that observation by suggesting that atoms have a positive nucleus that contains most of its mass and that the electrons are actually orbiting the nucleus, kind of like the planets orbit the sun. Our fourth and final scientist that we need to know about is Niels Bohr. What he did in 1913 was to use mathematical models to show that these electrons occupy fixed energy levels or shells that surround the nucleus. So he just improved on Rutherford's model. And in fact, if you look at the diagram in the bottom right there, that should hopefully look very familiar to you as that's still the model that we use today. So in the center, we have our nucleus made up of our neutrons and our protons and then surrounding them in their fixed shells are the electrons. So hopefully at the end of this video, you can now recall the names of our four scientists. So Dalton, Thompson, Rutherford and Bohr, and also remember the key points about what they contributed to the atomic models development.